Hello, and welcome to Lecture 1 of the School in Community Relations. We're going to be talking today about uh, the beginning, what is public relations, in an educational context. So there have been many definitions of public relations, both in school and non-educational settings. As a matter of fact, a recent researcher conveyed that there were about 500 that he found. Um, however, we're going to center on the following definition. The management function that establishes and maintains mutually beneficial relationships between an organization and the public on whom its success or failure depends. This is by Cutlip Center and Broom in 2000. I think it's worthwhile stopping for a moment and thinking about some of the parts of this definition in terms of, for example, mutually beneficial relationships. This implies that there are stakeholders in the community, in this case, what we're talking about, the educational community, and we'll be talking about who some of those stakeholders are. And a good public relations policy um, maintains uh, policies such that everyone benefits from them. Um, on whom its success or failure depends. I think sometimes in schools we become a little insular in our thinking in that we are delivering a service and it's a one-way service. But the fact is that in today's day and age we depend very much on our publics, on some of these stakeholders. If we extend that definition we get to what is educational public relations. And this is taken from uh, the United States National School Public Relations Association, this definition. A plan's systematic management function designed to help improve the programs and services of an educational organization. It relies on a comprehensive two-way communication process involving both internal and external publics with the goal of stimulating better understanding of the role, objectives, accomplishments, and needs of the organization. And I bolded the word two-way to indicate that it's not just a giving forth of information that we need to think about, but it's also a collecting of information and a sharing and a giving and a taking with the community, with uh, both internal community, such as teacher, faculty members, administrators, and external communities, such as parents and community organizations. There are four traditional PR models that have been studied. Uh, this, these four models were developed by Gronick and Hunt in 1994. And I'd like to just briefly go through the four models. The first and most simplistic model is called press agentry. And this is one-way communication with propaganda as its purpose. Um, so you might think, for example, of political organizations that uh, that give out information, some, some of which may not be truthful, but with the intention of, of persuading others. And then there's public information, which is a one-way communication of truthful information. For example, you might uh, think of uh, medical uh, announcements, uh, get your flu shot, get your flu vaccine, it helps you survive the flu. Two-way asymmetric uh, consists of the communicator receiving feedback from the public and then trying to persuade the public. And this is very many traditional public relation plans. You go out, you collect information, and then at some point uh, you try to convince the public of your own ideas. The most sophisticated model is called the two-way symmetric. In this model, the communicator is actually a mediator for the organization and its publics. So you have the school on one hand, let's say you have a group of uh, stakeholders such as the parent, and you have in the middle a communicator that's getting information from both groups and dispensing information to facilitate the communication process. The percentages that you see there are actually, uh, have actually been researched. So for example, press agentry tends to be about 15% of, of the PR models out there. Now this is not just schools but all organizations. Public information tends to be 50%, uh, two-way asymmetric 20%, and two-way symmetric about 15%. So you can see by most of the uh, PR models are one-way communication of truthful information. We've talked a bit about the stakeholders and in a school we have many more stakeholders than might, we might first think about. 
And these may be classified into two different types of stakeholders. Internal public, such as administrators, teachers, counselors, paraprofessionals, and other support staff, and I'm sure you can think of others, as well as external public, such as parents, students, volunteers, families of students, businesses in the communities, other organizations in the community, community leaders, and more. When we're thinking about how to communicate with these stakeholders, we need to think about the development of a communications or a public relations plan. And um, the terminology is synonymous in this course, uh, public relations or communications plan. And there are four stages to the development of this plan. First, research, uh, the, the gathering of information about what, what exactly is the perception in the community uh, towards the school, of the school. What is the perception within the school of, of the external stakeholders? Planning. Uh, now that we have that information, what are we going to do about it to benefit the school and benefit student learning? Communication and implementation of the plan. In other words, getting people on board the plan, implementing the steps that we've said we were going to take to improve the school's image or to improve the, uh, the, the flow of information between external and internal stakeholders. And finally, any good plan also needs to be evaluated. How well is it working? And then reformed if it's not working well. Let's take a look at each of these steps. We're going to actually be doing a little bit of research in this course. That's why the action research is embedded in this course, because you have to understand your internal and external publics before you actually develop a public relations plan. So you have to know how to go about gathering information systematically. Information can be numeric, so we call that information quantitative, or it can be um, more uh, language-based, and we call that kind of information qualitative. Um, so there are many different ways, and next week we'll talk about some ways of gathering that information. But whichever way we choose to gather it, it's all for the purpose of describing and understanding the situation, uh, public perceptions. Uh, so for example, what is it that parents think of the school? What is it that students think of the school? How, what do they think of administrators? What do administrators think of the, uh, the community? To understand all of these different perceptions and to think about the consequences of public relations. Uh, we want to tread lightly here, and especially in this course, we're going to be using pseudonyms, and we're going to tread a little bit lightly because we are dealing with people's perceptions, and we want to encourage them to be honest, but we also want to give them some safety in that honesty. Slide, specific, measurable, actionable, relevant, and timed. The third phase, communication and implementation, um, is when you actually carry out your plan. And the ways to communicate should be varied and appropriate for your goals and objectives. So there are many ways to carry out a plan. Um, and we're going to be talking a little bit later in the course about some of these different ways. Websites, Facebook, uh, the advent of technology has given us many more ways other than, for example, just a printed newsletter. Um, also, responsibility should be carefully delineated. Uh, you don't want uh, everyone talking, for example, <clears throat> to the press because they might give mixed messages. On the other hand, you want uh, a good representation of stakeholders involved in not only the development of your communications policies, but also in the implementation. As we said, this needs to be evaluated, and if you've carefully structured your goals to be and objectives to be smart, then that should be data-driven um, <clears throat> and relatable back to the goals and objectives. Again, it needs to be aligned with your school or district's mission and goals, and it should inform you what your next steps should be. So, for example, to go back to our earlier set of objectives, if that um, forum on full day kindergarten didn't meet its goals, well, you need to think next about what is going on with the parents. Why didn't they come? Was there some underlying issue of either resistance or not enough, um, 
not enough concern about the issue, or maybe it's just difficult for parents to get out at five o'clock for a meeting. So you need to think about how to readjust your, um, your steps so that you can take appropriate action. There are 10 components of a PR plan. Not every um, communications or PR plan that you see is going to have all 10, but they generally have at least some of these elements. You're going to be looking later in the module at, um, at some PR plans. And so I want you to be able to think about each of these sections as you see them, because one of your activities is going to be to critique one of these, one of the PR plans. You should see somewhere in the plan some overall goals, and they should be uh, tied to, again, your school or district missions or, or goals for the, for the school or district. You should see a discussion of who the target audiences are, who the stakeholders are, and hopefully objectives for each audience. Many times communications plans skip this step. They'll give overall objectives, but ideally you should, you should understand that objectives for parents are probably going to be different than objectives for um, administrators or faculty members. Strategies and tactics are how these objectives will be carried out, and they should be um, actionable. Uh, so how will you, what steps will you take to plan the family forum on full day kindergarten, for example? What activities? Um, evaluation, how will this be measured? <clears throat> and what materials will you need? What budget items? What timetable will this occur on? Will this be a year-long project? Will this be a year and a half? Uh, and so all of these components are fit together to, to support the goals and objectives of, of the communications policy.